A regular expression is a set of characters and metacharacters that are used to match a text in a specified pattern. You can use regular expressions to configure flexible goals and powerful filters. For example, if you wanted to create a filter that filters out a range of IP addresses, you would need to enter a string that describes the range of A regular expression is a set of characters and metacharacters that are used to match a text in a specified pattern. You can use regular expressions to configure flexible goals and powerful filters. For example, if you wanted to create a filter that filters out a range of IP addresses, you would need to enter a string that describes the range of the IP addresses that you wanted to exclude from your traffic. Let's if you wanted to create a filter that filters out a range of IP addresses, you would need to enter a string that describes the range of the IP addresses that you wanted to exclude from your traffic. Let's start off by looking at each meta character. Meta characters are characters that have special meanings in regular expressions. Use the dot as a wildcard to match any single character. The operative word here is single, as the regex would not match Act 10, Scene 3. The dot only allows one character, and the number 10 contains two characters, a 1 and a 0. How would you write a regular expression that would match Act 10, Scene 3? Would match Act 10, Scene 3. You could use two dots. To make your regex more flexible and match either Act 1, Scene 3 or Act 10, Scene 3, you could use a quantifier like the plus sign, but we'll talk about repetition a bit later in this module. Backslashes allow you to use special characters, such as the dot, as though they were literal characters. Enter the backslash immediately before each meta character you would like to escape. U.S. Holiday, when written this way, with dots after the U and the S, would match a number of unintended strings, including ups.holiday, u.sbholiday, and u3sgholiday. Remember that the dot is a special character that matches with any single character, so if you want to treat a dot like a regular dot, you have to escape it with the backslash. You'll use backslashes a lot because dots are used so frequently in precisely the strings you are trying to match, like URLs and IP addresses. For example, if you're creating a filter to exclude an IP address, remember to escape the dots. Use square brackets to enclose all of the characters you want as match possibilities. So, in the slide, you're trying to match the string US Holiday, regardless of whether the U and the S are capitalized. However, the expression won't match US Holiday unless periods are used after both the U and the S. The expression also requires that the H is capitalized. There is a regex you can write to match all of these variations. The question mark used here is another quantifier, like the plus sign mentioned earlier. Again, we'll talk about repetition in the next slide. You can either individually list all the characters you want to match, as we did in the first example, or you can specify a range. Use a hyphen inside a character set to specify a range. So instead of typing square bracket 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, you can type square bracket 0, 9. And you can negate a match using a caret after the opening square bracket. Typing square bracket caret 0, 9 will exclude all numbers from matching. Note that later in this module, you will see the caret used a different way, as an anchor. The use of the caret shown here is specific to character sets, and the negating behavior occurs only when the caret is used after the opening square bracket in a character set. Now let's talk about using quantifiers to indicate repetition. In earlier examples, we've used the plus sign and the question mark. The question mark requires either zero or one of the preceding character. In the expression three one question mark, the character preceding the question mark is a one, so both three and three one would match. The plus sign requires at least one of the preceding character. So, 3, 1 plus wouldn't match just a 3. It would match 3, 1, 3, 1, 1, and so on. The asterisk, or star, requires zero or more of the preceding character. In the expression 3, 1, star, the preceding character is a 1, so it would match 3, 
31, 311, and so forth. You can also specify repetition using a minimum and maximum number inside curly brackets. Recall that a dot matches any single character. What would you use to match a wildcard of indeterminate length? Dot star will match a string of any size. Dot star is an easy way to say match anything and is commonly used in Google Analytics goals and filters. It's handy to use the parentheses and the pipe symbol, also known as the or symbol, together. Basically, you can just list the strings you want to match, separating each string with a pipe symbol and enclosing the whole list in parentheses. Here, we've listed four variations of US that we'll accept as a match for US holiday. If it's not in the list, it won't get matched. That's why US holiday won't get matched if one of the periods is missing. In our list, we've accounted for both periods missing, but not for just one period missing. Using question marks, the second regex in the slide will match all of the above. The caret signals the beginning of an expression. In order to match, the string must begin with what the regex specifies. The dollar sign says, if there are any more characters after the end of this string, then it's not a match. So, caret US means start with US. US holiday matches, but next Monday is a US holiday does not match. Holiday dollar sign means end with holiday. US holiday still matches, but US holiday schedule does not match. Anchors can be useful when specifying an IP address. Take a look at these examples. Some character classes are used so commonly that there is a shorthand you can use instead of writing out the ranges within square brackets. Let's look at the example of a simplified regex that could match an address. Backslash D means match any one digit zero through nine. Use curly brackets and a minimum and maximum number to specify how many digits match. Backslash D followed by one comma five in curly brackets means that the address must contain at least one digit and at most five digits. Backslash S means that the number should be followed by one space. Backslash W means match any alphanumeric character. And the star means include as many alphanumeric characters as you want. Three, four, five Embarcadero matches, but just Embarcadero does not. because this regex requires the string to start with a number. If you want to make the number optional, group the first part of the regex with parentheses, including the space, and follow it with the question mark. Note that an address like 1600 Amphitheater Parkway would not match either because the regex does not account for the space between Amphitheater and Parkway. The slide shows one way you could account for this. Let's review. In the example on the slide, we've created an expression that will match the strings Google or Yahoo, regardless of whether or not Google and Yahoo are capitalized. Here we've created an expression that will match URLs for internet and theatrical movie trailers. The first part of the expression indicates that the URL can begin with anything. Then the expression specifies that the URL must end with index.php question mark DL equals video slash trailers slash and then either internet or theatrical. The dollar sign ensures that any URLs that are any longer than this won't get included in the match. You'll find lots of applications for regular expressions in Google Analytics. Some common examples are filtering out internal traffic by specifying a set of IP addresses, setting up a goal that needs to match multiple URLs, tracking equivalent pages in a funnel, and using the filter box that appears on your reports to find specific entries in a table. Here's an example of a custom filter that uses a very simple regular expression. Here's a regular expression used to define a goal URL. Here's how you might use regular expressions to group pages or funnel steps on your site. Using a regular expression allows you to track them as one funnel step rather than tracking each page or action individually. Learn how goals and funnels work in the module on goals. And here's an example of using regular expressions within your reports. We're using the find box to display all the rows in the table that contain Google or Yahoo. Google Analytics provides a tool that makes it easier to generate a regular expression that matches a range of IP addresses. It's called the regular expression generator and you can find it at the URL shown in the slide.
or you can search for Regular Expression Generator in the Google Analytics Help Center. You'll find a number of useful applications for regex as you use Google Analytics, but it's important that you think through all the implications of each expression that you use when you set up a filter or goal. It's easy to make a mistake and not get the data or the result you're looking for. Set up a duplicate profile to test your regex statements. After enough data has been collected, check your results and make sure they're what you expect. Remember to always maintain a backup profile that includes all of your data. There are lots of regex resources on the web. To get started, just search for regex.